Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Diseto and you're tuned into a safe space where we have hard conversations on life, love and all things healing. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome, welcome. You're going to love this place, um, but make yourself comfortable. Click the subscribe button and join the transparent family. So I'm sitting on the floor today. Ay, guys, good morning. I'm sitting on the floor because... I just wanted to be comfortable. Let me get comfortable. I'm not sitting on the floor because I'm disrespecting you guys. Uh, it's just the conversation I want to have with you guys is, yeah, it needs me to be grounded. <laughs> anyway, so I had said that I want to start putting out videos that detail the in between. Um, many people create content and they just want to give advice and. I, I want to stay away from giving advice on things that I don't know, <laughs> that I'm still going through. But I also want to let you guys in on how it is, how I'm doing, and also to just show somebody else who might be going through what I'm going through that this is a roller coaster. You will experience highs and you will experience lows. And this this right now that i'm feeling is the lows Ooh, i i hope i can keep my tears in um i need a tissue hmm. i hope i can t and keep my tears in because it is the lows and one thing that i don't want to do on this channel or, or any other platform that i have is to pretend um show up pretentiously um and not that it's wrong like it's not pretending it's just choosing what to put out there but because i said i want i want someone who's crying at night who's googling or scrolling through their youtube to know that there is a thing called the in between between you breaking and you healing and that in between doesn't have bullet points <laughs> You can't have said bullet points every time and say this is how you heal this is a sometimes there isn't any there aren't any bullet points it's just literally you depending on the grace of god and ice cream and a good community of people that will love you right so um i fetched my pillow because i want to be comfortable so yeah so today we will be talking about how to deal with triggers one it will be a story time it will be a story time so i will give you my my experience obviously like how i usually do it and uh from there i'll just hear what the holy spirit wants to say although i do know but because i'm feeling so heavy even in this conversation <laughs> i wonder if we will get to the parts that you know i know we need to get to um if my bra sticks out i'm sorry it's the in between <laughs> um i made myself tea i don't know why i'm nervous um to share okay maybe i do know so just before i get into the video when i i did an interview with a friend of mine and i did like quite a number of videos and um so my ex and his family was also not they were not impressed about you know me having or making the v these videos and guys it's so exhausting just that alone is exhausting and all of that so i think my my being nervous comes from that place because it really is emotionally taxing to deal with that uh but i chose to be transparent and i chose to reveal my in-betweens um so i am going to do it to the best of my abilities uh but yeah it is what it is anyway Get your coffee, get your journal. Uh, I'm all over the place, but we're going somewhere. Ne? Let's go. So last week I was invited to come speak at an event. Uh, I was invited to go. Uh, I was invited to a podcast, man. Hey, whatever. Maybe it's a sign that y'all should uh, invite me to speak at your events. Anyway, I was, I was invited to speak uh, in a podcast and it was really nice i can't wait for you guys to see it i think it is in march i will post it and um so you guys can um, post the link to the channel 
so that you guys can see what it's all about um and i think when i was doing the 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 shoot the podcast there there are things that i said that i did not re uh, realize um were a big deal to me the thing about recovering loudly is that having to hear yourself um narrate a story heals you or kind of illuminates parts that still need healing so um on saturday it was like a a combination of of the two there's a combination of me realizing that i'm healed in certain aspects and i still need help in others right and she asked me uh, a question about i think it was something to 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 the lines of what made me stay in my marriage or something like that and i said to her and look i didn't think about it when i was talking but when i left oof the guilt and the shame that I felt after saying that, right? And I said to her that I am such a, which is true, I'm a sucker for the story after the tragedy, that the story doesn't have to end at the tragedy, right? I am a sucker for that. I'm a sucker for the hope after the tragedy. I'm, this, I'm a sucker for the rainbow after the storm. So those kind of stories are the ones that literally light me up because I believe what? There's purpose in pain, right? And even when the tragedy was happening, what my mind was telling me was there is a rainbow after the storm when when everything was falling apart i was like it falls apart and then we, we rebuild and we see something glorious after that and that's the mentality that i had i'm still honestly just trying to figure out where it comes from and where the fear of letting go actually comes from because that's what it is that's what it is i'm afraid to let go because i want to see things i want to see things through like if i make my mind up that i'm gonna stay for example in this friendship i'm going to stay in this friendship like even if it becomes toxic i will stay because i decided this i want to be your friend i want to be with you um and i think even in my marriage i had decided that look we're going to do this like i we're going to do this and we're going to do it till the wheels fall off so tragedy all the other things that were happening, they would happen and I'll put them at the at the back of my head, right? Whew, that was such a, I said that and it was meant to be like a, a motivation of holding on to hope. But when I went home, I'm like, ma'am, you are so broken. Because I can't keep holding on to a robe that is causing me to bleed hoping that i'm gonna get to the other side sure i was like and you know the shame that comes with admitting that you made a wrong decision that you knew you weren't supposed to hold on to that rope but you did you know the shame that comes with that knowing that you are an emotionally um um intelligent person you are your iq is high you are prayerful you are it literally contradicts and confronts that side of you that you get to a point where you start now making excuses putting reason to 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 why you decided to hold on to the rope because i'd be damned if anybody finds out that a whole prayer warrior a whole whatever uh held on in a situation where she was not supposed to and oh this whole week like this whole week i was just like i was filled i was filled with so much shame and so much ah uh, like disgust to self because I'm just like, ma'am, but you could have. And I'm, I started now thinking back to even before I got married. Like, I could have. I, It's like I have a sixth sense, guys. I, I feel this thing, these things. But because what is like, like what is, what is coming out now is that because of my fear of rejection, because of my fear of, um, sorry, because of my fear of rejection, because of my fear of abandonment, I then, dis I, I, I used to then create this scenario that, 
kind of correlates with with the lies that you keep telling yourself and i i'm not gonna speak in parables like i'm just it's just the beginning <laughs> the beginning right and i feel like having to realize that i lied to myself because i was holding on to a story of hope that was so that was painful Whew. guys will i even be able to finish this let me get to the let me cut to the chase because wow maybe i shouldn't stop when i start crying i'll just i'll just roll y'all see my tears y'all will screenshot my ugly cry and that's fine okay i'm back hmm. so this takes me to the story so when i was confronting what i was going through i then um remembered an incident that happened it wasn't the first time it happened and i think that's why it hurt right so here i was it was after like a while my ex and i um like we went through let me tell you now we went through a lot as a young couple we went through a lot and look we tried mm. we went to we went from disappointment to disappointment from loss to hey we went through a lot and i think that time i was longing like we were dealing with so much that we couldn't be okay with each other i was longing to to have that companionship with him um so this happens i then he was going somewhere he was going to his friends they were going out or something and I was going to uh, launch. A friend was launching her MPO, her NGO. And he gives me his card and he's like, here's my card, go buy anything that you want. And things were looking up and I thought, you know, this is a time, this is a great time for us to rebuild properly. And um, yeah, so here I am, took his card. It was very weird for me to have his card and just swipe without any restrictions right so and as much as i had the liberty to do that i didn't really go overboard i just bought a dress and i bought a bag i should have bought shoes but i was like yo i think when the limit was over 2000 i was like or rather when i started swiping and it was over 2000 rand i was like that's a lot of money but i have a reason why i felt like that but this video is not about that um so here i am i'm swiping and i tell him look we're about to leave and uh, I tell him where we're going. And then he says, okay, cool. I'll pick you up after the event and you can book us at the, hot uh, ho the hotel closer there. And we can spend the night together there. And, you know, I'm getting excited. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, my man, my man, my man. Uh, we go to the, I go to the event, I finish. And then after the event, I call him and he doesn't pick up. Because remember, I had to call him for him to pick me up and to drop me at the hotel. And I don't know why I'm speaking like that. But <laughs> I called him, he didn't pick up. Tried to call him, he didn't pick up. And then I I don't remember if I got a hold of him eventually and he said he'll get me at the hotel or I just went without him. I don't remember. No, I think I did get a hold of him. And then a friend of mine decided, no, I'm going to drop you off. So, okay, there we are. I get dropped off at the hotel. I check myself in. After checking myself in, I then um, sit. I get ready. Like, oh, man's going to come. Right? Call him. Doesn't pick up. How? Six o'clock. Seven o'clock. Call him. He doesn't pick up. And boy, I, ch child, I, I, I called. Like, I called. I'm pretty sure he's looking at my phone like this crazy woman. Can't she see? Because he, he'd always complain about how I call him a lot when he's out. Makes me anxious. Makes me anxious. But anyway, um, I'll talk about that, right? But yeah, I called him, I called him, I called him, I called him. And that's also one of my other triggers, right? Because he would go out and I wouldn't get a hold of him. Um, so, so, okay, eventually I ended up giving up. I think I was uh, chatting with my friend throughout the night. Um, I think I also did tell her that, dude, Pella, I feel like I'm being stood up. 
and they stood up. Oh my gosh. And I think at that point it was, oh, I thought we were getting somewhere. I thought we were going to fix our stuff. I thought things were going to be okay. I thought he was finally choosing me again. So he doesn't pitch. He comes in the morning just before checkout. I was upset, but I couldn't, I couldn't express how upset I actually was. Like, I think even in how I was speaking, I was speaking around the hurt. I wasn't really expressing. And I think that has been just how I am, like even in the relationship. And I think it has a, something to do with the fear of what if he snaps and he doesn't come back? What if he leaves me? So here I was and I'm just like, yeah, I'm upset. You should have called. You should have water, water, water. And then, yeah, eventually I gave in. So here I am. And I'm, I'm confronting this thing. I'm like, no, that's not how a person lives. You can't, I can't, like, I cannot be able to stand up for myself because I'm afraid of rejection. Like, guys, you guys don't understand. I was just like, I enabled this person. Do you understand? Like, I just felt like I had a voice. And I just had a, a, a conversation with um, a brother friend of mine, right? And I was just telling him about something. And he says to me, what we're not going to do right now is silence your voice. Like, you have always silenced your voice. And I think that's generally how I am, even in friendships. Like, even... If I feel like a person has mistreated me in, in, in any way, right? It will take time for me to actually voice out um, what the actual issue is. Because I'll tiptoe around our friendship. I'll tiptoe, tiptoe around uh, the loyalty that you once showed me, you know? And recently, this, I, was, I was in a situation where I knew I had to leave. I knew I had to leave that relationship um, or whatever that situation was. Um, and it's not a romantic re relationship. I just can't mention what it is right now yet. So I knew, like, I knew I had to leave. I was being mistreated. I wasn't being, like, I was just, and I, I could feel in my spirit that it's time. But because when I thought of it, somehow it got interpreted as, oh, again, you're not going to be, you're going to be left. You're, you're, you're going to be rejected. I stayed. To my detriment. I stayed. And I'm just like... Sana. Like... How in the world... Do I do that to myself? Literally this whole week... I was asking myself questions... After questions... After questions... And... I think just this morning... I woke up and I'm like... No, I... I disarmed myself because of this fear and it's literally non-existent. Like I can live without the people that that cause me pain. Like, and you know what the funny thing is? I feel like I'm talking to my therapist. Just write down what the diagnosis is. <laughs> but you know what the funny thing is, ma'am? The funny thing is I I shamed myself unconsciously of always making excuses for people and i started believing like i said i started believing that they are not the problem maybe i need to tone down um no they are not doing me wrong i need to change my ways maybe if you did one two three then they will act one two three and I, oh yeah i remember while I was, um, you know, confronting and writing. Guys, also, like, the Purpose in Pain journal, when it comes out, this is just a draft that we did, like, and I was going through this, right? But the Purpose in Pain journal, when it comes out, it's going to help you know how to journal your feelings. But anyway, I digress. So I was thinking about how in most situations, when you are the evident broken one, um, for instance, now, 
I am I'm vocal about what I'm going through, where I am, right? Obviously, I'm not I'm not sharing the crux of you know the matters, but I am vocal. And most people will be like, oh no, she's still going through this, you're still healing, you're still going through that. But if, for instance, I meet a friend or a partner who is closed off, who people don't know what they're going through, um, I'm the obvious wounded one, right? And I will always take the fall because I'm the obvious wounded one. So even when situations happen, it will be, no, you're projecting, no, you are the one bleeding on this person. No, you are. So that's the thing, right? So because of that, you also subconsciously believe that your reactions to things are, are because of the wound that you are, you know, still healing from, right? And uh, for the longest of times, I feel like I used to condemn myself because of my wounds. Even Even today, this week, I felt like, I I let things happen. Like I let things happen to me. I let people do things to me all in the name of remember you're not in the right space. Remember you might just be uh projecting. Remember you might just be, you know, misinterpreting people. You might just but yes, I know that I'm recovering from you know being a an anxious uh, anxious attachment style whatever from that from 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 my style of attachment which is the anxious one i don't know how to put that but just because i'm 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 healing from that and trying to get myself out of that state it doesn't mean i need to allow actions of people that make me anxious happen just because yeah i know i'm wounded like yeah so this week This, this week was more about how I, I enable people to treat me the way I don't want them to treat me because I keep quiet. I keep quiet when I'm hurt. I keep quiet when people are, are, are mistreating me. And you know what the danger with that is? Is because when somebody does something wrong to you and you keep quiet and you do something wrong to them and they don't keep quiet immediately you remember the times all the times that you were quiet when they did you wrong but at that moment it does not make like it's not important anymore you know so now you're like how oh, but i forgave you internally when you did one two three to me and now you can't forgive me how's that and that puts a dent on your friendships it puts a dent on your relationships or whatever um yeah so i was there and i'm sitting this whole week today is even worse i was i was just like i caused most of my problems even saying it out loud is like yo said so how hurt and broken and fearful can you actually be to allow yourself to be hurt so much. Because even in the, the, the hotel incident was not the first time. It was not the first time. And my level of perseverance, maybe I should change my name. <laughs> Cause child, I will persevere. I will let perseverance finish its course, baby. I will, look, I will stay. But that staying is toxic. It's toxic to me. Whew, I don't even have a moral of the story. I'm just here to let you guys know that I'm in a season or in a week. Don't know if it's going to last me more than a week where I'm realizing that I'm the biggest reason why I was and will be mistreated if I don't change. If I don't learn to stand up for myself, if I don't learn to stand up for what I know I want or how I know I need and want and have to be treated. That was so painful for me. So for whoever's going through whatever, I mean, you'll get to a stage where like I've, I'm done with like the, the, the stage where I'm like, oh, I hate him so much. Oh, I... I'm just done with that. I'm just now looking into myself where I'm just trying to figure out where did I go wrong? 
How can I fix me for my children, for my future spouse? Because being timid, being overly forgiving, because it's not even forgiveness. No, it's not forgiveness. It's just you taking things and putting them at the back, some backlog somewhere, and they come back. Literally in arguments, they come back, you know, and you think you're forgiven, but you haven't forgiven. You just sipped it under the feet, the, the, the carpet, you know, um, you to, to come to a point where I realized I came to a point that I, I realized that I don't I don't forgive easily. Like once you've broken my trust in any way. I'll stay because I subconsciously want you to prove me right that you can make it better so i'll stay but i'll constantly put you in there don't trust this person they're gonna miss they're gonna mess up don't trust this person they're gonna mess up and that's not forgiveness that's really not forgiveness that's that's you being afraid of um confronting the actual fact like what is actually happening i need to stop this video because i don't even know why i shared this but this is the in-between they don't make sense the in-betweens don't make sense that's just what i'm trying to show you guys it doesn't make sense but what makes sense to me right now is that man my voice matters even when it's shaky and i can't allow i can't allow myself to to be quiet when I don't, when I shouldn't be quiet. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. That's it from me today. This is where I am in this week. I hope next week is a better week because heart be damned. So this part of the in-between is, is called blaming self no i'm not supposed to be blaming myself it's me being able to see my faults and rectifying them i don't know i don't have a catchy um title for it but in this in between state in this time i'm realizing that i i was wrong and i did myself dirty.